billion gallons of oil are used every year just to supply the U.S. with plastic water bottles. The U.S. alone throws away 38 billion bottles every year. That's two million tons of plastic going into U.S. landfills. And that's only from water bottles. In this year alone, every single person on the planet will use and dispose about 300 pounds or 136 kilos of single-use plastic. Plastic is wonderful because it's durable. And plastic is terrible because it is durable. Almost every piece of plastic ever made is still on the planet in some form or another. Plastic production globally this year is expected to be more than 300 million tonnes. Half of which we'll use just once and then throw away. By 2050, when the population explodes to almost 10 billion people, it's expected that plastic production will triple. The problem with that is, is that today only a fraction of the plastic that we produce is recycled. The rest ends up in our environment and it's coating our land and our oceans like a disease. That got me thinking about all the endless products made out of plastic. A lot of them designed to be used for less than one day. Heck, less than 15 minutes even. Once I began looking around, pretty much everything seemed to be made of plastic. Could all this plastic in my life maybe even be bad for me? So I started looking into it. The fact that it is everywhere, the way it doesn't go away, the way it pollutes, the way it flies and floats and drifts and clogs and entangles, the way it gets into things so big and so small, the way we can't escape it anymore. Plastic is everywhere. A lot of it ends up in the ocean. Most plastics in the ocean break down into very small particles. These small plastic bits are called microplastics. Other plastics are intentionally designed to be small. They're called microbeads and are used in many health and beauty products. They pass unchanged through waterways into the ocean. Aquatic life and birds can mistake microplastics for food. Research is being conducted, but there's much we still don't know. think that when we put something in the trash or when we just toss it from a boat or on a beach that goes away ha ah, we're we're now free of the plastic over 80% of ocean plastic leaks from land-based sources even if you don't live near the ocean chances are your plastic garbage has found its way to the sea The Great Lakes in North America are a good example. 80% of the litter along the shorelines of these majestic lakes is plastic. What trash doesn't remain on the shoreline or sink into the lake sediment flows through the canals and river systems, through the St. Lawrence Seaway and into the Atlantic Ocean. These Great Lakes are just one example. This level of plastic debris is found all around the world. rubbish that we found in the floating jetsam and flotsam in the ocean. You get Ben to go through it, but there's even a pack of, of unopened biscuits. You can see it's been there for some time, with the, uh, the mollusks that are growing off it. There's crabs. There's a crab in there. Yeah, look. Disposable lighters. They just say, you know, this is never going to degrade. These are going to be floating there for a very long time. They'll break down to very small particles, and that's if some large marine mammal doesn't come along and swallow them whole. It's got nowhere to go. And there's this whole phenomenon of persistent organic pollutants being absorbed of the plastic. So what's a persistent organic pollutant? 
Basically, it's chemical waste that gets absorbed by pieces of plastic and accumulates in the tissues of animals that eat it. So they become this transport mechanism for toxics in the environment. If you look at the, the tissues of marine mammals or mahi-mahi and swordfish and tuna, you find pollutants in them, the same pollutants on plastic. We're beginning to make those connections. Fish that we see on our tables at our restaurant fair are now being affected by plastic. Even one two and a half inch long fish, we found 83 pieces of plastic. Not only are we beginning to find connections between plastic and our food supply, these harmful chemical additives are capable of leaching out into whatever it comes into contact with. One chemical that's been in the news a lot lately is bisphenol A, or BPA. Bisphenol A was discovered uh, seven decades back, and it was already known that it has some endocrine disrupting uh, properties. Endocrine disruptors are basically chemicals that can mess up your body's internal signaling system. They make hormones go haywire and can cause all kinds of problems, from diabetes to brain disorders and cancer. Every day, we add estrogen-like chemicals to our body through plastics. Nobody asks the question, what will happen when we give bisphenol A to people through this plastic? 93% of Americans are walking around with bisphenol A in their bodies. There exists a material so pervasive, it is virtually invisible. Extremely common, but largely unknown. Plastic. It's a material that lasts forever in our environment, yet we use it for short-term disposable uses. Every piece of plastic ever created still exists, and it's polluting our planet at a catastrophic rate. It threatens life on Earth. But that's not the end of the story. Plastic is in us, and it's making us sick. Our own babies are born pre-polluted with plastic additives in their bloodstream. The more you learn about plastic, the more horrifying the story gets. My name is Tyna, and in 2010, I decided to quit plastic. Two years later, I challenged six families to do the same. Is it possible to live life without plastic? We did it with smoking, the smoking ban. We did it with seat belts and wearing seat belts. We did it with drink driving, actually, when that became unacceptable. We need to do this with waste. Are you sure you don't need a bag? No, I think I got it well, covered. Have bags on I got it I covered. Need I can do it. Okay, great. I can do this. Oh, thank you. There you go. Okay. Okay. Got it. All right. All right. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much. Have a good day. Plastic bags are being banned around the world. From New Delhi, India, and Bangladesh, where plastic bags were clogging storm drains and were contributing to severe floods, to the kingdom of Bhutan, where bags were banned to better foster gross national happiness. In 2008, China banned ultra-thin plastic bags. It's estimated that in the first year, it eliminated 40 billion. In May of 2009, the state of South Australia banned plastic bags, hoping to set an example for the rest of the nation. Tanzania, Uganda, Rwanda, Kenya, Zanzibar, and South Africa have all banned ultra-thin plastic bags. Many countries and cities in Europe have either banned or placed fees on plastic bags. Ireland placed a fee on plastic bags and reportedly reduced consumption 90% in the first year.